Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop. Another project video today. We are going to build a bench top welding table. Uh, if you followed my last video, you saw that I got a new TIG machine. I need a better place to practice some TIG welding, and I just don't have enough room in the shop for a freestanding welding table. There's some pretty economical options out there for a freestanding, even some foldable welding tables. I did look at some of the foldable options, but the, the one I really like from Miller with a nice 3 8 top, it's a little out of my price range. And some of the other ones, they've got a pretty thin top, and I thought, you know what, I think this is something I can make and utilize the space that I have here on the bench top. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. I've got the material. I purchased that just locally here from the metal supermarket, so I'll show you what I purchased and talk a little bit through the plan on what we're going to build. So if you're new to the channel, I encourage you to get out there and check out some of the other videos on machining, welding, knife making, just everything else going on in the Blades to Be shop. If you like what you see, would love it if you hit that subscribe button. All right, let's go ahead and get the camera pointed down here on the bench and let's talk through what we've got set up and what we're going to go ahead and start putting together. Let's take a look. All right, so I've got enough room here for an 18 by 24 inch bench top table is what we're going to build. I got a piece of quarter inch plate. Just again, got that sheared at my local place. So it's not going to be the, the flattest. I mean, this isn't going to be a perfect uh, assembly welding table since it was just sheared. I'm also going to take this disc sander and I'm going to go ahead and polish off the scale on here to make sure that we get good contact surface and I'll probably polish the backside really quick to make sure that any time, any place I put my work clamp on here, uh, we know that this scale isn't going to interfere with good conductivity. So we've got a nice quarter inch top and I also want to put together a little bit of a spatter shield, spark shield on here. So I just got some 20 gauge steel cut. Uh, this is 18 inches high, just made it a little bit wider than my plate at 26 inches and 18 by 18 for the sides. Yesterday I already took on the belt sander and I rounded the corners on these and I knocked off the sharp edge. Same thing on the plate so that way um, you know be able to use this without gloves but still it's 20 gauge material you're still going to always have to be a little bit careful of that thin edge on there. For legs we're going to use some 2x2 two two tubing. I got quarter inch wall nice and heavy give this thing a little bit of weight make sure it's not moving around. So quarter inch wall, going to cut these at about two and a half inches long and then I'm going to put a piece of quarter inch plate on top so it'll give me an overall height of two and three quarters for the legs and with the table we'll have about three inches of height overall on this and I'm just going to cut these a little bit short and we're going to run a bead of weld on both sides. Weld the caps on here, drill and tap through the center and then drill a hole through here and we're just gonna drop a 3 8 bolt and bolt these legs onto all four corners is the plan for the table. Now for how I wanna put together this spark shield, I am still gonna use a little bit of magnets. So I'm going to take some of this thin plate I'm going to bend a couple of brackets and I'm just going to use some magnets. We'll contact cement those in place. So I'll have a little bit of magnets to help hold that together. But I wanted something a little bit more sturdy at the top. So I actually came up with this bracket. Give you a little close up of this. So it's just a piece of angle iron and I've marked the top to show about what angle that fits on the material. And I just used a hacksaw and I cut those two slits in there. So this will sit on top up in that top corner and it does a pretty nice job of holding the plates together. Just the hacksaw width, a um, little bit of extra rubbing around in there with the hacksaw and that's just about the perfect width for that 20 gauge plate to fit in there. So we got those cleaned up. So I got one of these done. I'll get a close up here and I'll show you what this looks like actually in place. And then I've sort of marked out the other one and we'll go through and we'll hacksaw that out. So we've got one of these brackets to make couple of angle brackets to make and then four legs drill a hole in here and that's the bulk of this project and we should have a nice little bench top welding table that we can use with some good thickness um, other than that Miller table with a 3 8 top most of the other ones that I saw from like Northern Tool they all had about a 9 gauge top which is uh, closer to like an eighth of an inch thick so I really wanted something with a little bit more thickness so that's why I went ahead and thought putting this together would be the better option all right let me show you what this looks like in place and then we're going to go ahead and knock out the other one of these brackets first and then we'll get Get outside and we'll get the saw going, get grinding off and cleaning off the top of this plate and uh, get this cut in half so we can start putting some magnets on. Let's take a look at this first. Alright, so again by marking the top it sort of helps you visualize the angle because it's a pretty snug fit to get this to slide on. But if I visualize that angle, visualize this one. And there we go, that slides in place right there. 
and it gives us a pretty secure connection on holding that together. Get a little magnet, get a little bracket bent down here and some magnets just to keep that bottom corner in. And I think that's gonna work really well. Very easy to pull this apart when I wanna take it down. And then I just end up with three very thin pieces that I can tuck anywhere in the shop out of the way when it's not in use. But it gives me a very nice splatter shield up in here while I'm welding. So pretty much all inside of a metal surface, including the, the tin bottom around it. I think this should be a really good place for the practice welding for the small stuff that I want to do for TIG. So that's going to work out really well. Let's get this other bracket knocked out and then we'll get outside. All right, so pretty much just a hacksaw job on this. Let me just get rid of some of our extra material on here. Actually, you know what? First, we're going to cut our angles. We'll make sure I've got enough to hold on to. All right, first, we're just going to make our lines to get an idea of where that angle looks like because we definitely want to cut it on that same angle of the plate in order to get that to fit. All right, so now I can see what angle I need to hold my hacksaw on as I'm gonna go down and cut that first notch. And I'll turn the camera around a little bit so I'm trying not to stand right in front of it. All right, let me get the other one cut and then I'm gonna put a new hacksaw blade on there to get in there and just try to rub and rough them out a little bit better to get my width that I need. All right, that one is good. Let's get our file and rub in this one a little bit. Just a little snug at the top there still. All right, so we got the fit that we want on those two cuts. You can see just a little bit of wrench, a little bit of file work in there. Not something you want to go make a hundred of by any means, but to make one, you know, it's worth a few minutes investment. I think it's going to work pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and put a file cut in there again to mark the top of this so that I'm always able to sort of figure out which way it goes on the plates. It gets a little bit confusing if you don't have some marks to look at. So we're just going to file along those lines to have a make a permanent mark so it's not just the Sharpie. And back and forth is not the way to do it. That did not work very well. Oh, that was a little messy. I had a little cleaner on that one. All right, now we're just gonna cut the ends off of this, take it over to the bell grinder, clean it up, and we will be done. Well, there we go. We got our pretty much very similar looking brackets. All right, let's see what these both look like together on there. I didn't make a left and a right, but that is gonna work pretty well. It's kinda, it did work out. On my lines, it's got the long edge on one and the short edge, but overall, it functions the way it needs to, so that is gonna work. I don't need a left and a right. Ah, good, thought I made a mistake there. Well, I did make a mistake, but it didn't cost me anything that time. So that is pretty solid. I mean, it probably doesn't even need the supports on the bottom, but I just think that'll be good. It kind of gets bumped and knocked out there. So we'll put some magnet pieces on the bottom, but so far, that is looking good. Let's go ahead and get the saw set up and cut some tubing and cut some other pieces up a little bit and get the top of this plate cleaned off and ready to drill some holes.
All right, we got our four legs cut. We'll get the four tops cut. Be ready to weld those on. Well, we're making good progress. That plate, just grinding that scale off took a whole lot longer than I anticipated. I thought I was gonna be able to do it with just kind of a sanding disc, but I only had one sanding disc on hand. Probably would have taken five or six of those. I wanted to plug up a little bit, so ended up just using the grinder. Again, I'm not going for optically perfectly flat on that, so it will be good enough. Polished it up a little bit with the disc. So that turned out all right. We got our four legs cut, and we've got the four caps cut for those as well. I'm going to go stick these in the lathe and I'm going to face off both sides, make sure that they are nice and square and flat. Also, just make sure I get all these to the, the same length and then we'll go out there, we'll weld our caps on. Just going to run a bead down both sides, left a little bit of room, give me a chance to try stick welding with that Miller Dynasty and then we'll come back in and we'll face that off again, make sure it's nice and square. Drill and tap the center of that, just going to do that in the lathe on the four jaw chuck. And before we get to that piece though, we're just gonna finish making our spark shield. So I'm gonna take these two pieces, just gonna bend them in the center and get them to where they have that nice angle, they fit in there. And then we'll contact cement, a couple magnets, you know, probably put uh, two, 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 and two. So have definitely lots of magnet power holding those things on. So let's quickly get these bent. I'm not gonna use any heat or anything. I'm just gonna use the vise. I think that will work well enough, the vise and a mallet. And we'll get those bent around, figure out what that angle is that we need on there. And we'll get some contact cement going on those and then we'll head over to the lathe. I would say we've got those pretty much the same. Go grab our contact cement, the last tone, and we'll get those glued up. All right, we'll move down to this end of the bench. It's a little cleaner. All right, camera batteries died, so we got one done. So that's what that is gonna look like. We just did the contact cement on both sides. So while the batteries were recharging, I went and had some lunch. That should be plenty of magnet power to hold that thing together. All right, let's go ahead and re-clean our other piece. And we're just gonna try to clean these magnets as best we can. Just using some Gorilla Glue contact cement. All right, some contact cement, they want you to wait five to 10 minutes. This one, it's only wait two to three. So see you back here in two to three minutes and we will stick these together. All right, it's been long enough. Let's get these on here. Well, there we go. That should be a couple of good magnet angle brackets for us. We'll give those overnight to set up before we really use them. And I think contact cement is going to be plenty strong enough. I could have used some five minute epoxy. I just don't have any of that handy and it's just messier. So it's a pretty low stress joint. I think that just the contact cement will work for those. But if over time that's an issue, you know, some five minute epoxy or something else would work great on those as well. All right, let's go set those over there. Let's head over to the lathe and start getting these pieces of tubing ready. All right, this is gonna work out pretty nice, I think. So I'm gonna be able to, these will sit up against the back of the jaw, so I'll know where I am for depth. I should be able to get some good repeatability, get the length of these all pretty close to the same. And what I'm gonna do for the jaws, I'm gonna quickly, I'm gonna dial in around the outside. I'm just looking to get it, you know, close across here. I get it within 10 thou, I'm fine. I'm just gonna loosen the same two jaws. Being perfectly center, we are gonna drill and tap these afterwards, but. If they're not perfectly centered up, I am not as concerned about that. I just want them to be flat, square with the sides and square off of both ends of each other. So we'll get it dialed in 
reasonably close. We'll just use the same two jaws to swap out all of our pieces. We've got a nice stop against the back of the chuck, so we should be able to get good repeatability on our length. This should be a pretty quick process to knock these out. So I'm almost within 10 thou right there. So there's my little bit of a low spot is right there. So. About 65, 65, 75, and 70. I was in about five to seven thou there, but that's still my highest spot. And that's actually not my lowest. It's only within about three or four across there. All right, I think that is pretty good. We'll use jaws one and two to loosen off to change our pieces out. And let's go ahead and get these faced off. good. I'm gonna go just hit that on the grinder, get that sharp edge off of there. We'll do the first side on all of them, flip them all around, finish them all to length, go welder caps on. Here, we'll just see how close that's actually keeping us. Uh, not that great, actually. So we're a little high there. And 30 thou, 20 thou. Well, we're still gonna get them flat, so when I turn them around, when we're about to drill and tap the hole in the middle, we'll just take the extra minute and we'll dial each of them in and try to get them a little closer than that, not holding them quite as well as I had hoped it would. I mean, it is just tubing. Maybe if I looked at where the seam was and tried to grab them all exactly the same, I'd do a little better. But for getting these to length right now, this will do for us. Thank you. 
And we end up with 2.5925, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5,
I think that is going to give us what we're looking for. Nice looking weld. I'll take that for not running a stick bead in a while. All right, that should give it a nice surface to ground root. All right, I turned off the stick stuck. Got a lot of porosity at the beginning from all that arc startup, but the rest of it turned out not bad. with how those are looking. Definitely getting a little windy out here. Hopefully you can hear the video. The first side, you know, after all the starts and sticks, got a little porosity at the beginning, a little bit of junk in the weld there. But seems to be good. I'm not sure. It's a little hard starting. That will be my only thought on the stick process on this so far. So I'm sure there's a setting maybe that I'm missing on this uh, dynasty and getting it set up for stick, but yeah. That's gonna look good. Let's knock the rest of these out. That's all four. 
All right, we're back inside out of the wind and we have all four of these done. I'm pretty happy with those welds. I think the settings on there, you can see you know, a little bit of that porosity. This one didn't quite blend in all the way to the edge of that other piece, but overall I haven't stick welded in, uh, it's gotta be 30 years since I did any stick welding. I've been doing lots of wire feeds since then, but I'm pretty happy with how those look. I think getting my starts got a little better um, as I went on. So I think the machine was set fine just user error on those. Definitely a lot less spatter and splatter on that than using that flux core wire that I'm typically using in my wire feed. So I really like the way those turned out and the way that was flowing. Got to try out the welding table out there as we were using that to do our welding on. And uh, no, so far I think we're coming along. We've got holes to drill in the corners of these and then we need to just go in the lathe, face these off and get those tapped. And we're just about getting ready to pull this thing together. All right, let's head back over to the lathe. We are ready to get these faced off to length, drilled and tapped. So I am going to go ahead and just quickly dial each one of these. Wasn't getting very good repeatability when I was facing them last time. So for the time it takes, we'll just get them all within about 10 or 15 thou. And that will be good enough. Get the hole more or less in the middle. All right, so pretty high over there. All right, that's within about 10. We'll call that good enough on a piece of tube. And I'm just gonna take about 25 thou off, drill it, tap it 3 8 course, and we should be good. So it's a really shallow hole. I think it should power tap just fine. Just gonna leave the tailstock loose, let it pull it ahead. That worked fine. Let's deburr that a little bit. Now 
And there's one done. I'll just hit that sharp edge a little on the belt grinder and we'll knock out the other three. There, we're within about 10 again.
Well, we're coming down to it now. So we've got all four of our legs drilled, tapped, so our legs are done. Got some hardware, I'm just gonna use a socket head set screw down from the top for those. These are nice stainless steel left over from another project, so those should be good. Just give four little bumps on the top. Not gonna countersink them or anything, so that'll be what's sticking out the top of our table. As for our length repeatability, looking at 2.8, 14.5, Two point eight, fourteen five, two point eight, fourteen, and two point eight, fourteen. So they work pretty nice just putting them up against that four jaw chuck in the lathe to face those off, get them all to the right length. So we've got those done. All we've got left to do now is drill the four holes in our plate. So I'm gonna lay those out really quick. We'll head over to the drill press and get that done. I got our corner pieces on in here and they're actually, it's a nice, good snug fit, but that contact cement holding just fine on those. And yeah, that's a nice solid lockup. You know, that backsplash, back shield, Pretty solid. I can pick the whole thing up, move it around, move it out of the way. I'm really happy with how that turned out and it's nice, collapsible, easy for me to just pull it apart, lay it flat and move it out of the way. Same thing as the table. So coming together how I imagined so far, let's lay out these last four holes, get those drilled, bolt this together and we'll wrap this up. All right, so I've just got it sitting on this big table. I've got two screw jacks underneath the backside just to keep the plate so I'm not having to hold any of the weight on it. Figure out where I am for centered. I'll just put one clamp right here on this front edge just to keep it from doing any bouncing around while we're cutting, and that should be good. I don't think I'll need any more clamping power than that. drill up to go through one of the slots in the plate on the farthest corner for maximizing support. Give me the clearance I need.
I'll quickly deburr those holes and we're back over to the bench for final assembly. All right, it is final assembly time. Well, there it is, project complete. We're ready to get set up for TIG welding practice on here. Got enough room underneath, I ought to be able to set a couple things. TIG torch can hang over there, or, actually I may just leave the TIG torch down off the side and out of the way. Put my pliers, I can put some extra tungstens, definitely have some room. Put some of my welding coupons underneath. Nice surface on top to weld on keep any sparks, everything else off my bench. Feel like I'm pretty fire resistant in there at least. So I'm happy with how that turned out. Let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Well YouTube, that's a wrap on another video here in the Blades to Be Shop. Hope you enjoyed it as we designed and built this bench top welding table. If you're like me with limited space, limited room on where you can have things and you're looking for, you know, a nice welding surface, this I think will work pretty well. I know for me it's way better than trying to just weld on this bench top and I just don't have room for a freestanding or even a folding table, some of those that you can purchase. Just wasn't able to find what I wanted. I think this is going to work out quite well for me and happy with how the splash guard came together with these Interesting little top brackets, some magnet brackets down here. So again, if you're looking for ideas for a bench top welding table, I hope this helped you out. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to get out there, check out the other videos on machining, welding, knife making, just everything else we have coming through the Blades to Be shop. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button, drop a like, drop a comment. Would love to hear from you. Till next time, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own. I'll be here in the Blades to Be shop working on that next video, working on some welding practice. Till next time. Y'all take care.